The ASC A2 automatic transmissions and transaxles. This is one of the more difficult, if not the most difficult test out of the A1 through A8. Before even thinking about taking the test, it is recommended to have passed the A6 automotive electrical and A8 engine performance. Even then, I know a few technicians that had to take the test a second, even a third time before passing it. While training for the A2, I ran into three topics that seemed difficult at first. Number one is replacing a transmission. At first, it seems like this is one of the most difficult jobs to do on a vehicle. There's many small components that need to be unbolted, disconnected, or moved out of the way. Then you have the large components like the drive shaft and exhaust that need to be removed. And that's already an arm and a leg, man. On top of that, you have to be careful not to misalign the linkage, fully seat the torque converter, and get to the bow house to engine bolts. And sometimes getting to those bolts is a feat in itself. So at first, replacing a transmission might seem difficult, but with the correct tools and the service procedure, it's just that, another procedure. True or false, the transmission includes the final drive. If the transmission slips only during turns, what is the most likely issue? Number two, understanding friction and reaction units. You know, clutch packs, bands, members of the planetary gear set, these are some of the internal components of the automatic transmission and I knew nothing about them. You'll learn the different combinations of the planetary gear set, how a member is held in order to get a specific output. This information is usually enough to scare a couple of people away. I was basically thrown a whole book of information at once and then I was tasked with rebuilding a clutch pack. Basically, it looked like I had a piece of super advanced alien technology in front of me. I didn't even know where to begin. But once you see these internal components for what they actually are, they don't seem that amazing. At first, understanding friction and reaction units might seem difficult, but you don't even have to memorize the different combinations of the planetary gear set. And once you learn the small details about each internal component, you should be fine. So what is the common issue that causes friction units to slip? And what can happen if a clutch pack has too much clearance? Number three, testing the torque converter. A lot of people don't know that this magical piece of technology exists. The torque converter is located in between the engine and the transmission. It uses fluid to transfer torque to the transmission from the engine. That sounds incredible. It uses fluid to transfer torque. How do you even test something like that? Torque converters do fail. I've heard of people replacing the entire transmission when all they had was a bad torque converter. On older vehicles, you can stall test. And on newer vehicles, you'll most likely be checking the engagement of the torque converter clutch by using a scan tool. So at first, testing the torque converter might seem difficult, especially when differentiating between engine and transmission issues. But once you know what to look for, it's as easy as looking at scan tool data. So are you ready for the last set of questions? If the stator on a torque converter freewheels in both directions, how is that going to affect acceleration? If the stator on a torque converter is locked at all times, how is that going to affect acceleration? And that's it. As of July 2023, 78,178 technicians have active A2 certifications. Now this doesn't prove that the A2 is the hardest test. But feedback from other technicians kind of points in that direction. You can make a lot of money by servicing automatic transmissions and transaxles. 
maybe even more by rebuilding them. But first, you know, you gotta learn the proper techniques, you gotta learn how they work, and pass this test. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, or I will be sad. Have a good day.